Well, good morning. Once again, from Kit Kat Me. <laughs> and uh, I hope everyone is well. And so it's another week, another start to the week, another start to my RT lockdown sessions. And, uh, and this week, we're still staying with something watery. Uh, and we're featuring a little waterfall. So, uh, yeah, it's, let's get to it, shall we? Uh, as always, we begin with composition, so I'll busy myself with that for the time being. Um, and see how it pans out. Should be quite nice. I'll explain as I go along. So, right, so this is a, a, uh, a place in, in Everton, Everton Gorge, uh, up in the, in the upper highway area of Durban. Um, the posh side of town <laughs> and um, this, this particular place is called Porcupine Falls and it's a little stream it's not even it's not a river by any stretch of the imagination um, as many of these you know, tribute, tributaries to some of the major rivers some more, um, are uh, but they all contribute <clears throat> most definitely and I would imagine that this one flows into gosh I must actually check I would say this little stream um, joins up with the Umbilo River, um, yeah, anyway, well, whatever it is, uh, it's quite a, it's quite a nice hike, not a very long hike, but uh, quite a nice hike through a, uh, a, 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 an indigenous forest. To reach this point, and and once once you're there, it's it's quite a magical place um, because you've got you've got this 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 falls that comes sort of right down and into a really narrow little little um, gully at the bottom, and then makes its way through these giant boulders down down down. Um, and so I'm just depicting this this uh, little spray that comes over the edge, it catches the sunlight behind. <clears throat> yeah, see how it goes. Yes, it's quite a quite a magical place. Um, It's a little bit out of the way, so not a great deal of people really get to hear about it and never sort of really go there. You occasionally find a couple of people there, but uh, <coughs> it is a lovely trail. and branches and things this is all going to be filled up with foliage so 
So you kind of there's a there's a canopy of of trees all around, and then the light comes in. It's it's quite sort of angelic. Uh, yeah, especially at, at a certain time of day, of course. But uh, yeah, all you can hear is this is the is the trickling of the water. Um, perhaps the bird calls. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's one of those times when you can just escape from suburbia from city life and just flush the mind of all of that rubbish all of that it's wonderful and <clears throat> just getting my bearings here yeah so Hopefully I can do it justice. As I said, not a not a prominent falls by any means. Pretty much like the uh, the um, the forgotten falls that I did some weeks back ones up in Howick in the vicinity of the of the Howick Falls <clears throat> lots of charcoal in this piece by the way lots and lots of charcoal in fact it's predominantly going to be charcoal got this dark black rock all around this bottom section here uh, and across the, the top of the ridge and then we've got sort of what appears to be the sandstone um, on the cliff face. Uh, yeah. Too quickly just establish where the <sighs> I might just use a little bit of acrylic with this piece. I'm not sure yet, but uh, so let's okay, the proportions here are not correct. I'm not liking that. That place where that must go there. Yeah, I might just use a little touch of acrylic here and there with this piece, just to accentuate the uh, the flow of water or the uh, the water that catches the light. As it does on many of these rocks around here so yeah so let's see where I've got this going on here over here and we've got the Sun literally there it's just just behind the uh, above the uh, behind the canopy you can't see it for the canopy uh it's just sort of peeking through so we've got white light behind up there and uh and just catching the edge of the of the uh waterfall as it crests the edge of the cliff
been experiencing some public disturbances in South Africa, especially in KwaZulu-Natal, where I am. <laughs> Not in my immediate vicinity, but last night there sounded to be some something going on that uh, sounded to me like you know, where police were there with maybe rubber bullets and oh goodness um, sounded to me like uh, gr grenades um, what do you call them um, not stun grenades the uh, ones that give off the smoke and pepper spray and pepper whatever anyway whatever uh, it's fun and games here but that's South Africa for you huh? I shan't dwell on that especially at this time of the morning for me where it's all about positive vibes eh I must just warn you that this piece for the time being until it starts to get to reach a certain point of its development will seem to be quite scribbly. Well, here we go, I'm doodling. So it'll be quite a graphic sort of piece. And uh, yeah, just a bit of subtle deviation. Um, from the norm. Ah, mind they all are, aren't they? Trying something new every time. Come on now, come on. It's a little hard bits inside.
don't know that we've even reached the full extent of our composition structure today. Well, the semblance is there already, but... Uh, <clears throat> defining where the rocks are and, and that kind of thing. Let's see. Let's see. So the, uh, the changes in light here are quite harsh. There's a great deal of contrast, which means that any, any uh, the form of this piece and the, uh, its structure and its, its definition rather, um, form and definition will be quite difficult to discern because of the heaviness of the contrast because we've got these very heavy, dark virtually blue-black rocks at the, at the bottom here that obviously sprayed with water and as well so, they, so that they but they're also reflective because of the sun coming sunlight coming directly onto them here and catching their top edge and then the, 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 the front edge of them is in complete darkness and made more so by the intensity of the sunlight and so they, therefore we've got this very subtle changes in, 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 in uh, shade as the surface of the rocks change. Anyway, um, so that's kind of what I'm working with here, it's just an in interesting piece to work with. Uh, an exercise in exposure of light, I guess, and it's it's kind of there's this there's this almost a, a dance with the water as it as it comes over the edge and then bounces off the rocks and spl splashes up and then trickles over and through and around. Um, there's almost a sort of a choreography going on here that I find quite interesting. So it's that that I want to really depict. It's the it's the uh, it's the emotiveness of 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 this place and and of this particular moment um, capturing that that point where the light starts to, it, it, I mean, it, it's literally the, the cliff face is quite high up there. So, you know, the sun is, is virtually, it, you only get to see it, it's the very thick uh, canopy on top um, above you. So um, the sun's just peeking through this gap that, that, um, that is uh, the hollow of this, of this cliff face. It just comes through there, but otherwise everything is in shape, in dappled light most of the time. And so you catch the sun every now and again, but it's not, it's never going to be harsh sunlight on this place. So it's very cool. It's serene. And then as you look up towards the, towards the cliff with the, the top of the waterfall, it, uh, there is this dance of light, splashing water and what have you, which is lovely, very lovely. And we've got this, uh, we've got this yellow sandstone part of the, the, the vertical part of the cliff face, but, and yet it is catching the light reflected off the rocks that are coming down this way. So it's, it's, a, 
in another interesting play with light. And that's, and that's more this striation of compacted, almost like slate by the looks of it. And I'll try and capture that as well. It's kind of a lateral, all these layers that have been compacted over millions of years. That get quite easily eroded away because of the because of the fact that they're sandstone, so that they are softer than the some of the other rocks around, um, which are probably probably dolerite. Although that might yeah, uh, I think that there's sandstone that could be dolerite themselves, and then this might be granite. Um, I don't know. I'll see if I can find any information on that, but I'm very much doubted. It's not very, there's not a great deal that's written about it. It's not one of the most popular uh, tourist sites, uh, locations. So, you know, it's a little bit off the beaten track, so to speak. Because there is also Kranzkloof Nature Reserve and Kloof Falls, which is fairly nearby, by uh, 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 relatively speaking, um, and it's probably part of the same system, water system, um, and that's a much more significant falls um, and gorge. You know, there's a lot of you know, extensive, very extensive hiking trails that go down this the, the, the Kranzkloof Gorge. Um, this one is to the side, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and often overlooked. I'm not sure if you can actually get there from... I think this might actually ultimate... This might end up at... I must just have a look on my maps just to see. They might end up at Clue Falls. So, yeah. So, this is not going to really make that much sense for a while, as I said. Um, This is really exploring the uh, the what charcoal is all about. <laughs> this piece, it's very very graphic. Probably, in fact, I will definitely be also using my uh, compressed charcoal and also my black pastel, I would imagine, with this piece because it's uh, a lot of, as I said, a lot of contrast that calls for these very, very dark black areas.
subtle variations in lights depicting the different rocks and so on. In fact, today will be pretty much all about the darkness and then we'll introduce the light later. Anyway, let me, let me, let me uh, just work with a bit of a thinner one here. Also, Need to establish the trees. See the sun pokes the, the, the sky over here because I'll, I'll 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 establish the sky tomorrow. It might be a very small touch of blue towards the, the top, but mostly it's white. Um, but otherwise, there's this fan of of uh, foliage all above, all above here. gracious me chip again said I wasn't going to do and I'm just going to start putting in some some of this sky area just establish that I've got a point over here where the sunlight is catching the edge of the tree so it's going to be intense over there Also have some nice uh, rays of light, perhaps a little bit over here, because there's a mist that also rises up from the from the uh, spray. I said this is going to just <laughs> it's going to take up quite a lot of both charcoal and pastel because of the intensity of the contrast let's put that back down here
Now, that will be more like it. Use my actually let me just use some of that blue from previously and just wash it across the top here. Well, it's a bit of recycling. I really just don't I don't want more than a hint of it. So that's is almost I would say enough of the blue so that you won't even be able to see it really I don't think and certainly not on not on camera side anyways anyway let me put a little bit on And it will only be the side, I think, towards the top here. The rest is going to be white. Established a semblance of this sky sky area, and I'll work with it further later. What are, what was I using over here? Oh, this one. Oh, that one. <laughs> right. see when if you're not going to be 
actually sitting at the location at the location that you know like sitting here with your easel and what have you and actually describing this piece live in real time um, then you need to be then you're going to need reference imagery um, and when you do need when you do need reference imagery it's always good to establish that it's trying to capture as much of the of, of the composition the light that you that that you require um, and I always do that with uh, with my reference images and I take a lot of I take a lot of shots in the locations that I that I want to depict whenever they might be I, I, I visited this place I think it was probably about probably about a year ago in fact if I'm not mistaken and yeah I took a whole a whole lot of images to capture different lighting and what have you and it's important to have that so they have you have something to again reference to uh, So the process for this piece, it, it has a background. There's 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 more that goes on prior to this this occurrence than than what you're seeing unfold during this these YouTube sessions. Um, it all starts. With taking the, 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 the initial pictures, images, photographs. So photography is also part of this this end result. So what you see me depicting here is is the tail end of the of the whole process. I said it's never really about it's it's never it's 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 not about me um on, well only me uh, uh, yes I'm the artist I'm I'm the one who depicts all of that but there's the there's the location um, that presents itself for um for description there is uh, the ambience is the is the sun <laughs> the, the give, giving us the different um, play of lights uh, plays and light um, is the sharing people that you go with that you visit this place with um, there's there's a whole bunch of things the spending time there's there's you know so i i then come with that all that wealth of experience of this place and 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 use that energy in in describing it and then i'm using the tools that i you know so i've used the my the camera and whatever to capture and a series of images that i enjoy composition wise etc lighting wise and then I used to know that that's taken time to 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 gather together and what have you um, and now I'm here using those images as reference to when I depict this piece and so there's a uh, there's a whole lot of contributing factors that end up here and end up with me putting my signature on this on this artwork and, and it's just it's so, so it's it's more there's a great deal more than just what meets the eye um, 
and whether you know sometimes it can be yes it can be an abstract piece or it can be something that is uh, directly from the mind to the page to the to the um, from, uh, to, to the canvas uh, other times not uh, sounds like I'm waffling a bit here yeah? just trying to gather my thoughts as to why I'm describing what I'm describing to you um, there will be a time there has been a, a few times when I have described a, a piece um, a, an imaginative piece uh, intuitive drawing as I call it or intuitive art um, where it just flows from my head onto the page and but even then where do I where, where does one get that concept from the idea that, 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 that you know so there's more that goes on behind the actual actualizing of the piece Oh, I hope that made it made some sense. <laughs> it didn't really make much sense to me. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's get back to my. I'll try and I'll try and describe it as I go as I go through this, uh, in this on this journey. Sneeze now. Oh. Tickle in my nose, it's going. Oh. Come on. Come on. Well, notice that there's no rattle, by the way. There's no rattle as I'm scratching, scratching away here because I've managed to, my friend Michelle bought some, 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 uh, tape that is made from sponge. So I, I put some little supports behind there so that I, it just stops it from knocking, stops the wood from knocking against itself. So much relief there gosh that would that used to drive me crazy as these charcoal sticks sometimes want to do as well Okay, then just go there then. You really must.
actually definitely going to use my acrylics. in depicting this piece. Most definitely. It'll just bring out that lovely sparkle I'm looking for. Trying to capture the the essence of this of this uh, it's 
almost like shale, if you know what I'm saying. It's like there's, there's layers of, of uh, compacted dolerite or whatever it, whatever it is, um, sandstone, I don't know, but uh, it's got this sort of jaggedy layered effect. Getting there, most definitely. I'm waiting for time. Oh, about three minutes, four minutes left. Hmm. Okay. Tomorrow I shall start adding a little bit of, a wee bit of colour, a little bit of yellowy, mustardy uh, ochre into the, into the sandstone part over here, a little bit of yellow and, and green into the, into the, where the sun catches the, the leaves of the trees, of course filling up more of the sky and also more foliage up on top here. But that will be blacker with um, touch of a touch of light green where the sun filters through. So, but much more contrasty. Here, if the sun is at, the, the leaves are catching the light, so the yellowy, golden yellowy, greeny sort of colours. So yes. Anyway, sufficient progress, I believe, for today. Uh, as we as we made a start to this piece and I think it's it's coming on okay very graphic as I said <laughs> there's no denying that this is charcoal <laughs> um, so doesn't look like much yet I would admit but uh, nevertheless I think it shall come together quite nicely uh, once I've started working with my um, black Conte, my compressed charcoal, etc. Yeah, it'll start coming together better. More with more definition, with more uh, with more contrast, and yes. So I think it's going to turn up rather nicely. Anyway, be that as it may, I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I hope you have a fantastic Monday. And thank you for thank you for joining in with me. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for caring. So, uh, oodles and doodles of toodles. And see you again in our, during our next session tomorrow. Do you join me? And uh, do tell others. Uh, <laughs> always welcome some new some new, some new input um, and comments and what have you. So yeah. Anyway, catch you again soon. Take it easy, guys. Be good. Be safe. Take care. Bye then. Don't forget to always doodle.